Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Made It Live here on TV3. My name is Park Yasari. Top of the bulletin this hour. Pressure mounts on government to rescind decision to appoint former Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority as Board Chair of Ghana Revenue Authority. We'll tell you why. Also coming up, police begins investigations into clashes between residents at Achim Jampomeni and Heman in the Fantiaqua district. And in world news this hour, four-story building collapses in the Indian city of Mumbai, trapping at least 40 people. We've got details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with the views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We're very active on social media. Our handle is TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. Now, anti-corruption campaigner and co-chair of the Citizen Movement Against Corruption, Adam Senanu, has condemned the appointment of former Ghana Maritime Authority boss Kwame Wusu as a board chair of the Ghana Revenue Authority. His appointment has dominated discussions across sections of the Ghanaian media. Adam Senanu spoke with my colleague Stephen Enti on News at 10. Elia, take a listen. I think that the, for me the ideal situation would be to withdraw it altogether. Um, yesterday I, I talked about holding on, assuming that there is a report. Because if the report has not yet been completed, then it, it really is really very questionable that the mm. president would have made this nomination if the, the investigation is not complete. So the assumption would have been that, look, the investigation has been completed, there's yeah. a report that hopefully may have cleared him. But if that is not the case, then this should be revoked. So, so yeah. if, for example, he has been cleared, you would say that it's all right uh, for him to be nominated for another position, uh, despite all of the uh, skepticism that Ghanaians might have on the due diligence conducted in that investigation? No, I think that really what is happening is that we are giving the presidency the benefit of the doubt. Um, we, we are just saying, you know what, if you have that document or report, please provide it to the good people of this country so that we are all aligned and can say, well, the president knew what he was doing. But the likelihood is that um, that's not happened. Um, otherwise, this should be something that is of public sensitivity. Uh, we should all be aware that uh, this is what has happened. Um, I think in the best interest of all, all of us, the best would be to revoke, to withdraw, and find somebody else equally competent um, so that the fight against corruption is strengthened. On October 29, 2018, the Ministry of Transport, headed by the Minister Kweku Forisiyama, commissioned investigations into the conduct of the then Maritime Authority boss, which was carried out by the board that approved his conduct. Now, fast forward February 19, 2019, the Minister Kweku Forisiyama told the media he had commissioned a probe into Kwame Wusu's conduct to be done by the board and that he was still awaiting the report from the same board. Ten months on after the scandal, there is no report, but Kwame Wusu has been rewarded with a board chairmanship position at the Ghana Revenue Authority. We bring you a playback of exactly what the minister said at the time and events leading up to that. Four months ago, the Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Wusu, was in the news for allegedly approving payment to a hotel he owns for services rendered to the authority, which many insisted constituted conflict of interest. Lux Hotels, were allegedly paid 10,652 Ghana cities, 5 pesos, for providing lunch for 8 persons. The sector minister surprisingly constituted a committee from the Maritime Authority to probe the allegations. Four months later, the sector minister says he is yet to receive the report. I asked the board to set up a committee to investigate the matter. The report is yet to be given to me, but I can tell you, now, when the report is forwarded to my office, I will make it known to the general public. So, just exercise some patience. I'm sure it will not be too long. Um, if it is presented to me, I will make it known to everybody. 
Kuku Furie Siama confirmed the retirement of the maritime boss who he said has attained age 65. The boss of Ghana Maritime Authority, having attained the age of 65, has graciously retired. He has given his resignation letter to the president and thank him for wonderful opportunity given to him to contribute his quota in the country. All right, so we're going to stay a while longer on this uh, developing story. We're going to be joined on the phone lines now by uh, Kwame Agboja, who's member of the Transport Committee of Parliament. He's right there on the phone lines. Thank you very much, uh, Kwame Agboja, for your time. And good to have you on Midday Live. So have you seen this report? Well, uh, good afternoon to your church viewers. Uh, as a matter of fact, the minister promised to carry out a swift investigation into the allegations surrounding the former GMA boss. As we speak, I am not aware the committee was formed and who are the members and whether any report has been presented to the, the minister and what he did with the, the, the report. Uh, so as the, the, the simple question to that answer is we are not even aware whether the committee did do any work and whether a report was submitted to the minister uh, for any decision to be taken at all. All right, that's fair. Uh, so what do you make of this very latest appointment? Well, it's uh, quite worrying because in the first place, it's even not good for the image of uh, the former GM boss himself. I think uh, as a country where rule of law works, it would have been in his own interest for this committee to be set up to make a determination to clear his name or the, uh, otherwise. So as long as this uh, uh, report is not presented and made public, it gives uh, credence to people who feel that uh, you shouldn't be uh, uh, actually elevated because the, the GRE uh, uh, board chairman is even a bigger responsibility than the GNA uh, boss that he was. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a, a genuine concern for people to ask why government is in uh, a rush to appoint him when the, the, the particular report has not been made public. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Kwame Agboja is member of the Transport Committee uh, in Parliament. You're still watching uh, Midday Life here on TV3. Meanwhile, in the heat of the controversy and the um, allegations being levelled against his office at the time, Kwame also rejected claims that the authority blew an amount of 10,000 cities on lunch for only eight people. Uh, he indeed uh, added that such reports were mischievous and a calculated attempt to smear his reputation. Well, at the time, he was accused of installing 11 air conditioners. We we'll bring you a playback. One million Ghana cities that has been used to renovate a two-bedroom house for the director general. Tender process went through administration. The bills of quantities was done by prestige. So the director general could not have influenced the outcome and gave it to my friend and said increase the money so that when they do it, I can have your so-called chop-chop. That building is now made out of four bedrooms of the main structure, the main house. A living room, a dining room, kitchen, a family room, a library, and a basement. Each one of them to have an air condition will be 13. So the 11 is, is been not enough. And by the way, we don't put them all together. You're still watching Media Life here on TV3. Now, over the last few months, Ghanaian students in China have been arrested for illegal work, money laundering, and a few cases of drugs. While well, some of the students are also being deported for the non-payment of their fees. The National Union of Ghana Students, as part of its National Congress tomorrow, is seeking to address some of these challenges. Uh, Julius Jia is the president of the National Union of Ghana Students in China and will shortly join us uh, all the way from Beijing uh, for us to find exactly what's happening and what's the very latest on this matter by still watching midday life here on tv3 let's know uh if you feel strongly about any of our top stories this hour you can feel free to send your views and comments on social media uh we're very active on social media our handle is tv3gh on facebook and on twitter and the news is that over the last few months Ghanaian students in china have been arrested for illegal work money laundering and a few cases of drugs while some of the students are also being deported for 
non-payment of their fees. The National Union of Ghana Students, as part of its National Congress tomorrow, is seeking to address some of these challenges. Uh, we'll be speaking shortly to Julius Jia, who is the president of the National Union of Ghana Students in China, uh, to give us a more update on this developing story. Let's go to the courts now. And an Accra High Court has revoked the bail granted Gregory Foko, who's been accused of the murder of the Upper East Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Alaji Adams Mahama, in 2015. Jurors are expected to be empaneled on, the, on July 17 uh, agenda date. On March 14, 2019, another Accra High Court presided over by Justice George Boedi admitted Gregory Afoko to bail in a sum of 500,000 cities with two sureties, one of whom must be justified. That was after his lawyers had argued that their client deserved to be granted bail because the state was not ready to prosecute him. The lawyers based the argument on a nolly prosecutor filed by the Attorney General on January 28 to discontinue Afoko's trial after more than three years. The AG filed a nolly prosecutor after the arrest of Asabgi Alangdi, the other person alleged to have conspired with Afoko to allegedly commit the murder. At a hearing on Monday, another high court presided over by Justice Meli Ifuawood, a justice of the Court of Appeal sitting in as additional high court judge, revoked the bail granted to Gregory Afoko. The court revoked the bail after upholding the arguments by the prosecutor, Chief State Attorney Marina Piopon, who argued that the circumstances under which Afoko was granted bail had changed. According to her, the other court granted Afoko bail on the basis that the state was not certain as to when to start prosecution. She further argued that there was the likelihood that Afoko would not appear before the court to stand trial if the bail was not rescinded. The late MPP Upper East Regional Chairman Alhaji Adam Mahama suffered severe bodily injuries after a substance suspected to be acid was allegedly poured on him in front of his house in Bogatanga in the Upper East Region on May 20, 2015. He later died from the injuries at the Bogatanga General Hospital. Meanwhile, legal practitioner Martin Kwebu has been explaining how a decision by a high court could be overruled. He spoke to me on News 360. The other court that granted the bill is a high court. And this is also another high court. Even though in this new trial that is about to start, the judge is a court of appeal judge, but she took him as a, a high court judge. And in the other trial as well, Justice L. L. Mensa was also a court of appeal judge, but he was uh, sitting on the case as a high court judge. So, what is, what is what was expected was that, oh, because another court had granted bail and it took some time for the accused to meet all the conditions, it would have been the, uh, so we're expecting that the court to say, okay, accused should remain on the former bail. That's usually the expectation because you know this is a court that granted bail so the judicial committee and everything but uh, in this case the trial judge exercised a discretion in the other way and decided to revoke the former bill so what is going to be, uh, happen is that you see as i mentioned because this is a fresh trial naturally uh, from the way it is they would come properly before this new judge and apply for bail again formally so that then if it doesn't work, then they can go to the court of appeal. Yes, so watching Media Live here on TV3. Let's quickly return to one of our top stories for the day. And over the last few months, Ghanaian students in China have been arrested for illegal work, money laundering, and a few cases of drugs. Some of the students are also being deported for non-payment of their fees. Uh, the National Union of Ghana Students, as part of its National Congress tomorrow, is seeking to address some of these uh, pertinent issues. Julius Jia is the president of the National Union of Ghana Students in China and joins us live uh, from Beijing. Uh, thank you very much, Julius, for your time. So. First of all, why are the students in, engaged in these activities of money laundering and what have you? Thank you very much and a, a good afternoon to all your listeners. Yes, uh, our students have been involved in these activities for uh, different reasons. But for a lot of them, the illegal work, it's because of issues that surround uh, their financial challenges that they face in China. I think most of the students here are 
self-sponsoring. They are not on scholarships. And so they try to work in one way or the other to support uh, themselves whilst they are here. The case of money laundering, for most of them, it's lack of knowledge. I think they do not know. And so sometimes their Chinese friends or other nationals drag them into, into it. And so we've had a few of these cases over the years as addressed by the deputy ambassador earlier uh, this year during the dinner at Beijing. And for this conference starting tomorrow and ending on Saturday, we will want to address some of these issues and draw a roadmap for the future. All right, uh, ja, so we know that tomorrow you have the opportunity of hosting the education minister and other quite important dignitaries. Uh, will these issues be raised? Sure, they are. Uh, I mean, our annual congress is a period where we review all activities over the year and chart the right path for the future. And so they are uh, some of the main issues that will come up over the next four days. Jilos Jia, I've got to say a big thank you to you for joining us all the way from Beijing in China. Jilos Jia is the president of the National Union of Ghana Students in China, uh, essentially telling us about all the challenges students there are uh, going through. You're still watching Media Life here on TV3. We're, we're going to take a short break when we return. We've got more interesting stories coming your way. You're welcome back to Media Life here on TV3. Now, security has been beefed up as Achim Jampomeni and her man in the Fantiakwa district of the eastern region following clashes between residents of the two communities over mining. Now, the town folks have been protesting the pollution of the Berim River and degrade degradation of the environment by the Dom Mining Firm. Residents of Jampomeni mounted roadblocks preventing cars from moving to and fro the Achim Hemine amidst manhandling of drivers and passengers whilst threatening to clash with protesters at Achim Hemine opposing mining in the area. The accused resident of Achim Hemine of being incited by their distilled chief, Professor Merikisu Apori Atta. A police team from the Kibi district, which arrived earlier in the community, were resisted by the residents of Jampomeni, hence the deployment of the counter terrorism unit from the regional police command. Let's quickly uh, engage uh, Yvonne Nikwe, who's been monitoring developments there. Yvonne, thank you very much for, your t uh, for joining us here on Midday Live. So what more can you report on this uh, latest matter? Okay, I'm currently speaking to you from Dampomini. Uh, what has been happening for the past two hours is that the teens and elders of two communities, that is Dampomini and Domi, uh, have been giving their side of the story. They feel that the... Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining uh, gave the miners the permission to come and mine per the agreements they have. And so the people had to mine illegally on their lands by the two communities. Now, the thing that the land on which the miners are working is there and not that of the human community who are protesting uh, against the mining. Now, there is one river which passes through the three communities, that is the Akrasu River. That is what the human people feel is being polluted, and the mining must stop. We have gotten the side of both Dampermini and Domin, and so we'll try as hard as we can to get that of human to see what their positioning is on that. All right, thank you very much. Uh for joining us all the way from the eastern region on the latest development. Up next is the very latest in business news. Now, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, COPEC, has lauded oil marketing companies which have compensated customers as a result of under-delivery. The Executive Secretary of COPEC encouraged all other OMCs cited in the Ghana Standards Authority audit report to also compensate their customers and ensure that their pumps are routinely checked. Last week saw two oil marketing companies, um, Goyal Goodness Energy, uh, roll out some customer promos uh, to give back a lot to these customers who patronize these stations as had been mentioned earlier by the Standards Authority audit. 
uh, it is quite encouraging. We are happy uh, that these stations now have departed from the norm where they only pay fines and that is the end of uh, whatever when these pumps sometimes do not read uh, the volumes they are supposed to read. Uh, we are quite hopeful that the other OMCs, Allied, uh, Glory Oil, Shell Total, uh, Frames, uh, would follow suit and roll out something, extend a hand to these consumers uh, so that they also feel part and parcel of these businesses. It shouldn't happen that when something goes wrong, uh, we only pay these fines and the people who patronize these stations will leave them. We are quite hopeful that uh, the others will roll out their promos uh, in this coming week. Now, two years ago, the World Health Organization and the United Nations ranked Ghana the seventh dirtiest country in the world. Fast forward 2019, the situation has not changed. So we ask, is it behavioral or sociological? In this report, Deborah G. Famakafri attempts to understand why the problem persists. The capital city, Accra, is overwhelmed with uncollected refuse daily, which poses serious risk to public health. In 2017, the World Health Organization ranked Ghana the seventh dirtiest country in the world. Two years on, not much has changed. And even though the past government have adopted interventions to remedy the situation, it appears waste management remains a bigger challenge. Accra alone generates close to 3,000 tons of waste daily. Wet damp is a major source of worry for waste management companies, as the main dumping sites in Accra are almost full. Much attention, too, is not paid to recycling, which could remedy the situation. Authorities have in the past relied on attitudinal change campaigns as a means of changing the trend, but it appears much has not been achieved. So we ask, is the average Ghanaian concerned how dirty his or her environment is? Ghanaians are not dirty. It is because of the way we have made the Ghanaian. Leadership at all levels, from the district through the regional to the national, they have dirty mindsets. They are not making us I mean, do what we are supposed to be doing. He implored government to take sanitation seriously. We need leaders to also do a kind of encouraging communities to mobilize resources to be able to do things to uh, save themselves. But a psychologist, Bedou Ajiman, believes the psychological makeup of Ghanaians could have a role to play in all this. We as psychologists believe that experience, exposure to a particular situation can invariably affect your behavioral patterns. We believe that people learn by watching and emulating the steps of relevant others. He explained certain steps must be taken to consciously psych Ghanaians in the fight against insanitary conditions in the country. What is our orientation? At school, children may not be engaging in this simply because they may have seen their teachers, they may have seen some adults, they may have seen some hawkers, they may have seen some market women littering around. So while in some cultures they groom these toddlers and young ones to appreciate the need to ensure that the environment is clean, we are rather empowering young ones to appreciate that littering is a norm. In Ghana, approximately 13,900 adults and 5,100 children die as a result of poor sanitation and hygiene every year.
Yo, welcome back. Let's do some uh, entertainment news. Nine hip hop musician Kwame Nsia Apao, known by stage name Ochame Kwame, has stated that the rap music is part of the Ghanaian culture and should not be credited to anyone. He indicated that rap music is an appellation as he believes there is no originator of rap music in the country, despite nicknamed the rap doctor. In an interview, the rap doctor stated that music in the country has improved in terms of both lyrics and video quality as compared to the era 20 years ago. The 2009 Artist of the Year believes that there is more room for improvement for the Ghana music industry. He further explained that he's impressed with the performance of the new artist because the current musicians are doing marvelous work than the pioneers in the industry. Elsewhere, the fate of the Musica national election, slated for July 17, is unknown as an Accra High Court has scheduled the hearing of an injunction case to July 23. A presidential, presidential aspirant, Ras Kaleb Apia Levi, uh, caused an injunction to be placed on the election, alleging a flawed voters register and reconstituted elections committee. My colleague Owusuwa Rai has this one. Originally scheduled to take place on June 26, the Musica national elections have suffered many postponements. On July 9, the Union's Elections Committee further postponed the election, announcing July 17 as the new date. Subsequently, a presidential hopeful, Ras Caleb Apia Levi, went to court to seek an injunction on the election, praying the court to order the election committee to compile afresh a valid and credible voters' register to guarantee a free and transparent result. Now, we find out that all of a sudden the membership of Musica has just increased. And when you try to compare with the regional chairs, you say, well, our numbers are not so big like that. We have not seen no money like that. These are some of the things. Okay? Why a lot of, uh, all of a sudden there are a lot of membership over there. Where is the money for that? So you suspect a ploy, a plan? It's a ploy, a plan, a plan to rig the elections. You can't have it so cheap. But and you think the courts can get Ooh. you all the remedies? Like the courts, I believe in the courts. I believe in the courts. That's why I didn't make any trouble anywhere. On Monday, Musica's lawyer filed a defense seeking the court to hear the case before July 17. The judge, however, indicated that he hadn't received the docket, advising that the case be heard on July 23. The decision implies that Musica cannot go ahead with the election on July 17 as planned. As it turns out, we will just have to wait for 23rd for for the case to be determined in the court. Yeah. The director of special projects at Musica, Bosco Ahumo Okansi, regrets the turn of events, noting Rasa Pia Caleb should have exhausted the union's internal dispute resolution processes. Our constitution indicates that in matters of dispute or conflict, the arbitration committee should handle those matters. However, it appears as if the aspirant did not go through exhaust those processes he wrote to the elections committee and copied the arbitration committee and i think before anyone could say jack there was an injunction from the court so i um, I, I sincerely believe that um, ras could have been a bit more patient i wrote a letter of petition on the first of july it was a monday it was dispatched you never respond to me no. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the Malaya says, this afternoon we are going to file a writ. Ras Apia Caleb then is also seeking a declaration that the election committee, headed by Smart and Cancer, be dissolved and reconstituted. I don't, I don't trust the committee. I want it to be changed. No, 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 no. Well, that's all for Midday Life here on TV3. To win the news, a quick recap of our top headline stories. Point. Former Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority as Board Chair of Ghana Revenue Authority. Also, please begin investigations into clashes between residents at Achim, Jampomeni, and Hermine in the Fantiaqua district.
And elsewhere on the international front, four-story building collapses in Indian city of Mumbai, trapping at least 40 people. That's all for the news. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com.